Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be working on coin change and it's a pretty popular interview problem so definitely want to make sure you know this one and this is going to be our next video in our TypeScript line 75. So you're given an integer array of coins and you have an infinite amount of each of these and you want to return the minimum amount of coins you need to get to the amount and if you can't do it then return negative one. So in this first example to get 11 the easiest way to do that is 5, 5, and 1 and the smallest amount of coins. Second example, we need to get three, we only have coin two, so we can't do that. And in the third example, we need to get zero. So to get zero, you just don't use any coins, so we'll have zero coins. So we're actually gonna solve this using bottom-up DP, and the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna make an array of amounts from, let's just like go through this first example, from zero to amounts. And I usually do memoization, but in, our, in this case, let's just work on it with straight up bottom-up DP, and to try to be able to do it without doing any kind of memoization solution. So essentially what we are gonna do, we do need to kind of like figure out what our cases are, but essentially what we're gonna have is we're gonna have an array of amounts. And then for each amount, we will try to use all coins. And then we'll have a base case of where we've reached our amount, right? So what we're gonna have is actually, we're gonna have an array of amounts and then we're gonna have a base case amount and a, um, and like the final amount we're trying to get to, right? So our base case amount will actually be over here and then we're gonna to try to build at the end. So our base case is the amount we're trying to build is zero and then the last one is gonna be over here. So we're, we need to have um, 12 like rows essentially or 12 columns actually. So one, two, three, four, five, six, make this seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and then we can see 12. So we're gonna draw out our amounts that we need and this is gonna be our base case. So if we need zero, that'll be our base case where we have, we don't need any coins and we'll have amount one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And then this is the one we're trying to get to, right? So essentially what's gonna happen is for every amount, we're gonna go left to right. We are gonna check and we're, by the way, we're, so we're gonna initialize all of these amounts to infinity and infinity is gonna symbolize like we can't get this amount. And then we will later minimize. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna take this infinity and we are going to initialize all of these to infinity. So infinity, infinity, infinity. Okay. okay. And a base case. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at this amount and essentially we're gonna figure out like, let's say we wanna use coin one. Well, if we want to use coin one, what amount will we have, right? Like if we want to use this coin here. If we use coin one, we'll have zero, right? We can just take whatever index we're on and subtract the coin to get the index that we need to check. So if we use coin one, our, our amount would be this. And then what's our what's our number there? Well, it's zero, but we did use a coin, right? So to use a coin costs one, and then, and then you just add like whatever the state is over there, right? So we use the coin which costs one, but then we get to zero. So then if we try coin two, coin two would be out of bounds. So for anything out of bounds, we'll just say like that's invalid and we'll ignore it. Coin five will also be out of bounds. And now let's fill out this amount number two. So if we try to use one coin, we're gonna have this. So that'll be one plus one, right? Which will be two. So we have two here. And if we try to use two coins, then we also, um, so actually, sorry, if we try to use one coin, it'll be this plus one, but if we try to use two coins, we'll come over here and that'll be zero plus one, right? And so that's gonna be the minimal thing we want. So we're gonna have a thing here. Let's actually get rid of these arrows because we're gonna have too many arrows. So now for amount number three, let's try to use, oh, and then if we try to use five coin for amount two, we'll be out of bounds again. So for three, what's gonna happen here? So we can try to use one coin, two coin or five coin. So if we use one coin, then we're gonna get one plus one, which will be two. If we try to use two coins, we'll get one plus one, it will be two, and five will be out of bounds. So either way, the minimal thing here is two. Let's actually get rid of these, but we just know that they will start with infinity. So if we aren't able to get anything, then we'll be out of bounds. In this case, we are able to get them, but let's say the only coin you had was like 10, then this would just be infinity. Okay. So for four, if we try to use one coin, it will come over here, that'll be two plus one, three. If we try to use two coins, come over here, one plus one, that will be two. And if we try to use five coins, we'll be out of bounds. 
So the minimal thing is two here, right? We'll use one, we'll use a two, and then we'll get one plus this. So for five, if we try to use one coin, we will get one plus two. If we try to use two coins, we will get two plus two. And then if we try to use five coins, we'll get zero plus one. Sorry, if we try to use one coin, it'll be two plus one. Two coins will be two plus one. And then five coins will be zero plus one. And that is correct, right? Because to get from five to zero, you would want to use a five. Okay, so for the six. So for the six, if we try to use one coin, we will get one plus one, which will be two. If we try to use two coins, we'll get two plus one, which will be three. And if we try to use five coins, we'll be all the way over here. And uh, we will get one plus one, which will be two. And that is correct, right? We can either, if you try to use five coins, five and one would work. And if we try to use one coin, one and five would also work, right? So those are like are our best solutions. So for seven, obviously our best solution is gonna be this one over here where we use two coins, because that's gonna be the smallest number possible, right? We can't get all the way to zero, so it's gonna be our best. So we're gonna get two here. Now for eight, ideally we wanna get this number or this number, we can't really get to those. So if we try to use one coin, we'll get two plus one. If we try to use two coins, we'll get two plus one. And if we try to use five coins, we'll get two plus one. So here, all of those are two plus one, so we will get three here. So here, we will try to use, so one coin is obviously not gonna be good because that's gonna be three plus one, two coins will be two plus one, and five coins will be two plus one, so those are the smallest, so that would be three. For 10, we can, we actually, this is gonna be the ideal one to get to, and we can get here by using five coins. So that'll be one plus one, which would be two. And then finally for 11, um, if we try to use one coin, it'll be two plus one. If we try to use two coins, it'll be three plus one. And if we try to use five coins, it will be two plus one. So this is the smallest. So that's kind of what we're doing. And let's kind of like write down our algorithm. So make array from zero to amount. For each amount, loop through coins and minimize value, right? If the index minus coin is out of bounds, Ignore the value because we're out of bounds. Otherwise, it's going to be one plus whatever value we have. And then we just try to minimize each one of those, right? So we make them all infinity. So if, let's say we make them all infinity and like our coin is 10. Then for all of these, for all these early ones, like you're not going to have a valid coin. So these will stay infinity. So that's why you want to make them all infinity. Then finally, what you need to do is you need to figure out like, okay, well, what's your value here? Is your value here, was, did, were, were we able to get it? If we were, we, were, we return it. And if it's infinity, then we should return negative one because that's what they ask for, right? So they say, if you can't do it, get negative one. And that's kind of how you do it with just straight up bottom up with no, mem no memoization. So kind of good to practice to do bottom up with no memoization because like building memoization and bottom up takes a while, right? So sometimes it's good to just see if you can understand the bottom up solution. Okay, and now we can code it up. So we're gonna have this array, right? That's gonna be length amount plus one. So const dp equals new array. It's gonna length amount plus one. And we're gonna fill it with infinity. Now we are gonna make the starting value zero because that's our base case, right? dp of zero is gonna be zero. Then we will be looping through every single amount, right? And then every single coin. So first we're gonna be looping through every single amount and then we're gonna be looping through every single coin. And so we can start at zero or we could start at one. Like zero is not gonna get any better. So I guess we can start at one. So we can say like four let row or yeah, I don't wanna use amount again. So let row equals one and then row is less than dp dot length, right? So that's gonna be our amounts row plus plus. Then the column is gonna represent the coin. So for let column equals zero, column is less than coins dot length, column plus plus. And then we're basically gonna figure out like what's the value of having some amount and then taking the coin we're currently on. So that's gonna be const take the coin is gonna be a row, whatever we're on minus coins column, right? So we take, we have some amount, we subtract the coin is that less than zero? If it is, then we're just gonna say that's infinity because that's an invalid result. And if it's not, then it's gonna be, we take a coin, right? So that's one plus DP of that index. So it's gonna be a row minus coins column. 
OK. And then we simply try to minimize our state. So we're going to say DP of whatever row we're at, which is like the index in the amount array is going to be the minimum of the old one and taking the coin, taking the current coin we're at. And then finally, we can return the DP of the very last uh, of the very last index, which is just DP amount. But remember, it might still be infinity, right? Like we might, it might not be valid. So we're gonna say, let's return, is it infinity? If it is infinity, let's just return negative one. Otherwise we can return the actual value. And we can try to run that. And commit it. And let's take a look. And so you can see it does work and it's quite efficient because this is as good as you can do for this problem. It's a bottom-up DP. Um, you could do this with two-dimensional bottom-up DP if you wanted to, where instead of for every amount you loop through the coins, you have like a take or don't take scenario. So you, you figure out where you are in the coins array and then you have amounts as well, but that's like a 2D solution. So this is like a better one. Okay, and so let's figure out the time and space here. So for the time and space, Essentially, our time is like all the amount of states. So this is going to be amount times the amount of coins we have, right? For every amount, we go through every single coin. So that's going to be that. And then for the space, okay, for the space, our array is length of whatever amount we have, right? It goes from zero to amount. So this is going to be the space. And yeah, it's going to be all for this problem. So hopefully you liked it. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.